Okay, let's see. Uh, it is not B. Ooh. What's the integral from A to B of F of X? It's the exact formula. F of which one comes first? B minus F of A. That's D. Look. Okay, remember, integral A to B of f of x dx is capital F of B, capital F of A. And then remember that capital F is the antiderivative of little f. Do you all remember talking about that? Okay, so whenever we do the brackets, let me put it to you like this. What's the antiderivative of little f? Big F of x. And then what would you do? You would plug in B and A and then subtract. So that's what we've been doing all along, but that's like the definition version of it, okay? Okay, so go down to number 10. Number 10 is almost the exact same question, but you're going to have to use U substitution. Now, this is where, um, so actually, let me stop there. So look at it. What do you think you should pick as your U? 2x. Good. So pick 2x and then do your whole integral part and rewrite it. So you're choosing your u to be a 2x. And then you're going to find du and then find dx. And then you're going to rewrite your integral. So do those first couple of steps. Okay, so if it's a 2x, what's the derivative? 2dx, which means that dx is du over 2. Okay? So now we're going to our rewrite step. So I have the integral from 1 to 3. f of, it used to be a 2x, what is it now? A u. And then instead of a dx, now it's a du over 2. Now, from here, where can I take the 2? Okay, is it going to be a 2? Half. So it's the integral of f of u du. And then 1 and 3 still? No, you've got to change them. What did you get? 6 and 2. Remember, you take your old endpoints and you're plugging them in here. So if it's a 2x, when I plug in 3, 2 times 3 is a 6 on top. And then when I plug in 1, 2 times 1 is a 2 on bottom. Then from there, what is the antiderivative of little f called? Capital F. Okay, 1 half. Oops, this should be a u still. And then I'm going to plug in 6 and 2 and subtract. Look at your answers. Which one says that? Which one? E, e is correct. Very good. Make sense? Okay? Uh, and then your obvious ones to cross out would be all the ones that have twos in the front. Because if you have a one half and you know, or if you have a two, you know you're going to end up pulling out a one half. So hopefully you could have at least gotten down to those. Um, all right, next one. Okay, this one's a little bit tricky. This whole page is kind of weird because it's like kind of. Uh, more like conceptual versus just like normal problems. Okay, but look at the very first step. This is something AP will do a lot. Okay, normally what do we call the antiderivative of little f? Big F. What did they decide they're going to call it for this one problem? Okay, G is now going to be the antiderivative of f. Okay, is it the same exact type of thing? Yes, but they're just picking a different letter to make it confusing. Okay, so look what it says. Uh, G is the antiderivative. G of 2, which we know in our heads is really like capital F of 2, okay, is negative 7. Then what is G of 4? Okay, so let's kind of think outside the box here. We want the antiderivative of F. Integral of F. Okay, now what are my two X values? 2 and 4, because you'd be picking the numbers that are inside the parentheses. So this is one x value, this is the other one, 2 to 4 dx. Now, normally, what would I call the antiderivative of little f? Big F, but what am I going to call it for this one problem this one time? Capital G. And what would I have? Capital G of 4 minus capital G of 
2. So far, so good? Okay, they gave you a substitute for one of those letters. Which one did they tell us? Okay, G of 2 is going to switch to be a negative 7. So this is going to switch to be, if it's minus G of 2, it's going to be a what? Okay, so it's going to be, uh, it was a 7 though, right? So it would be a plus 7. Yeah? So, so far we have this. F of X DX is G of 4 minus negative is really a plus 7. What are they asking you to solve for? G of 4. So if I wanted to get G of 4 by itself and it had a plus 7 on its side, how would I get rid of that? Minus it across. So look at your answer choices. Okay, which one do we want? E. Why not D? Yeah, when you subtract the 7 across, it shouldn't jump into the integral with everything else. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So you should pick E on that. <coughs> All right. Next one. This is asking you to rewrite the integral. So I'd like for you to give that one a shot. What should you pick as your U? Oh, it even tells you. Look, they're so nice. Okay, using u equals 2x plus 1, which integral is equivalent? So all of these answers are rewritten. You don't even have to do it. You just have to rewrite it. do the antiderivative, just set it up. Okay, which one are y'all picking? I see lots of C's and lots of B's on y'all's papers. What's the difference? I think it's C. The endpoints. Do you have to switch them or no? Yes. If you're going to leave it in terms of E, you can't use the original endpoints. So your U would have been 2x plus 1. DU is 2dx which means that dx is du over 2. So it looks like most of y'all got that 1 half on the outside, u square rooted du, but you have to change your endpoints. So if it used to be a 2, what is it now? 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And if it used to be a 0, what is it now? 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. So it had to be, let's see, got it? Um, all right, I would like for you, please, to pull out your pink formula chart, okay? Now, in fourth period, because they have, like, an extra ten minutes, I made them rediscover this one again, okay? But I'm not going to make you do it. Well, no, maybe I won't. No. But, okay, are you really going to memorize everything on that pink sheet? No. Probably not. So, how could I break up? And it's really not that hard, and it's great practice. Sure. Okay, so split up tangent. What is tangent the same as? No, 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 no. You're, you're answering what is the derivative of tangent. Okay, what is tangent if I split it up to a fraction? Okay, so I'm going to do a rewrite here. I'm going to make it sine 2x over cosine 2x. Okay, and here's why. I could give you a fish or I could teach you to fish. Okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> so your u is going to be cosine 2x. What's your du then? What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine 2x times what? Y2. What rule is that? Chain rule. Yes. Okay, then from there, dx on the end. Got to get our dx by itself. 
So it's a negative 2 sine 2x. It used to be on top, so now it's on the bottom. Okay, do your rewrite. And what's going to happen with your sine 2x's as usual? They're going to cancel out. So I have sine 2x on top. On bottom is my u. And then I have a du over negative 2 sine 2x. What constant is going to move to the front? Okay, negative a half. And then what's left over is a u? One over u. One over u, du. And remember, we have an, a rule for that. One over u is not a rewrite. What's the integral? So negative one half ln u. Don't forget your absolute value bars. And then what was our u originally? <laughs> Look on your paper. What is u? Cosine 2x. Cosine 2x. And now that I've already made you get out your sheet, you see that's a rule on there. I think it's on the bottom of the first column. May I borrow? Okay, right here, look. Negative ln cosine u. Negative ln cosine u. Okay? So, but if you're not going to memorize that, then you should be able to pretty easily figure it out if you need to on the AP test. Okay? So, what answer is that? B? E? <laughs> Yes. Number 10 on the integral side. So if you memorize the integral for tangent, you can do that. But if you're not going to memorize it as this rule number 10. No, no, I mean like you went from tangent to sine over cosine. Yes. Why can't you just do u as tangent over cosine? Because that's what you have. Because what's the derivative of tangent 2x? secant squared 2x, and there's not another secant squared to cross out with that, okay? Um, so we are going to skip this page for a second and come back to it. We're going to do the word problem on the back next, okay? It's a nice little review, okay? <coughs> Who wants to read it for a candy? Oh, oh, no. No one? I'll give you a candy to read it. Okay, it's <laughs> there are lappy tappies. Okay. okay, I'll sweeten the deal to peanut butter crackers. I'll read it because I'm hungry. Okay, great. Karen <laughs> rides the, uh, her bicycle along the straight road from home to school. Starting at home at time t equals zero minutes and arriving at school at time t equals 12 minutes. During the time interval zero to 12 minutes, her velocity b of t, the miles per minute, is modeled by piecewise linear function whose graph is shown above to the right. Perfect. Okay, so first question, what I would always do is relabel your graph. What is in our graph? What is it? Position, velocity, acceleration. Velocity. Okay, velocity. What is it measured in? Uh, minutes per minute or miles. Miles per minute. Very good. What is on the x-axis? Okay, time, which is measured in? Minutes. Minutes. Okay, good. Time measured in? minutes. Okay, so part A says to find the acceleration. If this is velocity, what is acceleration? Okay, so y'all jumped right to the answer, but acceleration is the derivative, which is a slope. So go to 7.5 on your graph. Count the slope. It is a trick question, so make sure you count carefully. 7.5 is between 7 and 8. It's a straight line. So the acceleration at 7.5 is the rise over run of that line. Is it negative 1? No. No, look at the axis. They, they could have tricked you. Negative 0.1 over 1. Mm -hmm. Now, indicate units of measure. A lot of y'all miss this on your test. If it's acceleration, automatically, what are your units if this is miles per minute? Minutes. Miles per minute no, squared. Like, where's that point one at? Do you look at the axis? Count. It's point one, point two, point you three. Know, you do the whole line, Helen. I know that, but I didn't look at the axis, girl. Yeah, so it, since they're decimals, you just have to count like that. 
Okay, so A should have been easy as long as you didn't make that mistake and miss the axis units. Okay, part B. Using correct units, explain the meaning of the integral from 0 to 12, absolute value of V. Is that displacement or distance? Distance is correct. Okay, why? Because displacement can be Magnitude. negative. Distance can not. So that would be, the, okay, so you write it, and then I'm going to write it, but I'm going to leave something out, and I want to see if you can find it. Okay, so you try to write it, and then look at mine. Distance, Karen, road, over. Yeah, do your, uh, do your own interpretation. Don't copy it. Try to write your own and then look at mine and see what you think is wrong with it. You can't read it? No, like I already looked at yours. Oh, you already looked at it? Okay, well then try to fix mine if you want to. I left one thing out that will make you lose your... units. Miles. I put minutes. No, no. Yes, that is what a lot of y'all did on your test. You remembered these units. What is her distance measured in, though? Miles. So you would be the distance in miles that Karen rode over 0 to 12 minutes. Okay, and then some of y'all on your test, which I'm hoping I have time to pass out, but I don't know. Okay, some of y'all just put over 12 minutes. That's also not specific enough. Okay, because it could have been from 2 minutes to 14 minutes. It has to be the right 12-minute period, right? It can't just be any 12 minutes. So make sure you're being really specific on those. Okay, then we want to find the value of the integral. How are we going to do that? How are you going to find the value of the integral? The area. Yeah. Area. Okay, show me what shapes you have in your picture. Triangle. Okay, now, do I care about those triangles? Uh, yeah, maybe. Now, actually, hold on. Let's talk about something. If it's distance, do I care about those triangles? Yes. Yes, yes you do. Now, when you find one of them, have you found both of them? Sure. Yes, but you do care about these triangles, okay? Now, if it weren't for the absolute value, they would have crossed out with each other. But in this case, they do not. Okay, look at the giant crap shape that you're left with. It's not a shape, but can it be broken up into shapes? Okay, yeah. so try a way of breaking it up. Try to figure out your own way before I'm going to show you mine. Because I want you to try. Because there are several different ways that you could break it up. It's double point two. So it would be point four. There we go. Okay, I do not think that you can break it up into less than three. I'm going to break it up into three, but but maybe you can. I don't know. What? How did you break it up? Okay, here's why uh, fourth period had suggested the same thing. Um, if you break it up like this, you have like the little baby and then you have the big one. Here's kind of the problem with that. How long is this base? It hits in the middle. Now, if you want to get fancy and count the slope and figure out that that's a third, go for it, but your formula is going to suck because your base is going to be two and a third, and you're going to hate that, okay? So don't pick that way. That would be a good idea if it was a whole number, but what it's not. What are you trying to buy, three or less, or just I think you should break it up into three shapes. You could break it up into like a bunch of individual boxes and triangles. Okay, where's the right triangle? Okay, 11 and 12. So we got one guy that we can separate. Okay, could I go ahead and just keep going to here and call that a trapezoid? Yes. Oh, that whole thing. Yeah, but I got to stop. And then what could I call this little chunk? you got to make it a triangle. So look, watch. This whole thing is a triangle. And then what's left over on the top? A, a little pink trapezoid. Okay, mm. it is. And normally they're not this complicated to break up. Okay, so look at that up close. Okay. 
I would like for you to find the area of just the blue trapezoid and the pink trapezoid because I know you can do the triangle easily. So do the blue and the pink. Valerie, are you okay? <laughs> Would you like a super bola? <laughs> okay. Or hey, I have a crystal light packet. Do you want to put it in your water? Shake it up. <laughs> a little something tasty to drink. Tasty to drink. Six times point six. Six point one. You want grape or six hundred point? Okay, this guy right here, you should have had one half. How long is this base from 6 to 12? How long is this base? No. 6 to 11, how long is that? How tall is it? 2? Yes. Okay, could you leave it like that when you add them all up? Yes. Yes, you could. Okay, pink guy. Area, what would it be? One half. Base one is going to be the bottom one. How long is it? Top one. So two plus one. How tall is it? One? Point one. Good. Okay, and then for your, pink, your yellow one and your triangle is blah, blah, blah. So you could add that up. It would not be hard, but you have to add everything because of those bars. Good? Okay, we're going to skip it. Go to part C. Okay, shortly after leaving home, Karen realizes she's made a tragic mistake and left her calculus homework at home. <laughs> she returns to get it. At, like it. <laughs> at what time? I know y'all would just keep coming to school anyway. Yeah. But pretend. Okay, you're very dedicated. What time in the graph did Karen turn around? Don't say it out loud. Look at your graph. This is her velocity. Okay, now listen, you can't give more than one time. It says, at when is the first time that she turned around to go back? Two. 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 Why two? Because the slope changes direction. Or like the sign. Because velocity changed sign. sign. And remember, what does velocity tell us? Direction. So she was going forward when her velocity was positive. Then when her velocity switched to negative, she was going backwards. So she changed directions at t equals two. Okay, then it says give a reason because V of T changes sign. Okay, and that indicates that she changed directions. Okay, and then you can see from four to five what was she probably doing if she wasn't riding her bike. Oh no, where's my homework? Can I find it? Okay, that's what she was doing. Okay. I know I did it. I met with my study group, okay? Like all of you do, I'm sure, on the weekends, okay? Part D. Larry also rides his bicycle along a straight road from home to school in 12 minutes. His velocity is measured by the function W of T, where W is in miles per minute from 0 to 12 minutes. Okay, who lives closer to the school, Karen or Larry? Now, we already know how far Karen traveled, right? How far did she travel? This junk, right? Yeah. And we, we already have, would have pretended to have found it, okay, but now we're doing part D. How do I know how far Larry traveled? This is his velocity. Okay, I need to find how far he went. How would I do that if this is miles per minute? Integral. From where to where? 0 to 12 of this guy right here, pi over 15, sine pi over 12, t. Okay, so look at that integral. Remember, this is going to tell us how far Larry, what did he do? He drove? Oh, no, he rode his bike, too. Okay, that's going to tell me how far he would have ridden to school. So if I want to compare who went further, I need to compare their integrals. So for Larry, what, what, what method would you need to use? U sub. Very good. What would I choose as my U? Yes, and now keep in mind, I added this. That was not originally in the AP question. Okay. 
So u equals, they're not going to give you the little hints that I give you sometimes. So pi over 12t, so find du, find dt. Remember, the derivative of a constant x is just the constant. So what's the derivative of pi twelfths t? Pi twelfths what? D. D. In this case, t. So then normally I'd want to get dx by itself. Well, then I'm going to get dt by itself. So that would be du multiplied by what fraction if I need to get rid of pi over 12? Reciprocal. Reciprocal 12 over pi. Okay, let's rewrite our antiderivative here. So we have the integral of pi over 15 sine of u and then dt is now 12 over pi du. Um, the pi's cancel out. Okay, and now question, would the pi's have had to cancel out? Not, no. Okay, d remember, what has to cross out? X's. Yeah. Could I have pulled out a pi if they didn't cross out? Absolutely, that would have been fine. But conveniently, they do cross out. So in the front, I'm going to bring out a 12 over 15. I am going to simplify it next step, but you can simplify it now if you want to. Sign U, DU. What do I need to remember to change? The endpoint. End so right here and right here. You need to find those new endpoints we are plugging into our u sub, which is pi over 12. Okay. If I plug in 12 what? times pi over 12, what do I get? Pi. pi. If I plug in 0 to pi over 12t, what would I get? 0. 0. And then what is the antiderivative of sine u? Good. Now I'm going to put the negative on the outside and I'm only going to plug in cosine u. Okay? Uh, yeah, I am going to put this in the front simplified, which would be four-fifths. Okay, but that is the same, right? Okay, then I'm plugging in pi. What's the cosine? Let's do cosine zero first. What's the cosine of zero? One. Because remember, zero is here and cosine's on top. So everybody's on top. What about the cosine of pi on the other side? Negative one. Negative one. What do I do with these guys? Subtract. Does the order matter? Yes. Yes. Negative one on top minus one more is negative what? Negative two multiplied by negative four over five. Okay. And does it make sense that his distance traveled shouldn't come out negative? Eight over five. But my negatives are going to cross out, right? So it would be eight fifths. And then at the end you would compare, okay, this is how far Larry went, answer to part B which we skipped, and then just see who went further than the other. Okay? How do you feel about this? It's a lot of work. A lot of work, okay. Uh, we are going to go back. Okay. Um, so this was an AP question, but most of the time, no. And that's where when I give you guys AP problems, for the most part, if we're doing them together, I'm not going to pick like the dodo easy ones because you don't need me to help you on those. I'm going to try to pick the tricky ones. What if it's easy to you, but it's not easy to us? Yeah, yeah. So I try to put ones on there that are going to be challenging enough. I mean, if it's like a rectangle and a triangle, I'm not going to like put those on stuff. But sometimes they are complicated, but a lot of times they're not. And keep in mind, you have 15 minutes for every single free response. Uh, so that's a long time to break something up into triangles you mean like and rectangles. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, will you get out your, p you have your pink sheet out already? Okay, I want you to go to the back page, and I want you to look at the integrals and the arc trig. It's like 16, 17, 18, I think. Oh, no, 18, 19, 20. Okay, you see these guys right here? Okay, we did derivatives of these in the fall. So now we're going to do integrals with these exact same rules. Okay, these are not that bad, but you will at some point, 
I would at least pick two if you're not going to memorize all three. The top two are pretty easy, but whatever. Okay, but for now, you have your sheet and you have it all the way till May. So, look at the first question. Which one does that look like? Rule 18, rule 19, or rule 20? 18. Okay, here's why it looks like 18. Number one, you have a square root, yeah? So that eliminates 19. It can't be 19. Okay, then look at 20. Do you see how you're supposed to have something else in front? There's a thing in front. So it can't be that. So write rule 18 up here on the top of your paper. Okay, so rule number 18 says integral of 1 over a squared minus u squared under the square root du equals inverse sine u over a plus c. Okay, what do you think my a is if a squared is 4? 2 squared. Okay, yes. Huh? So if a squared is 4, what is a? 2. two. Okay, good. A is 2. Okay, now look at where u is. If u squared is x squared, what is u? X. Just an x. Now, if u is just only an x and there's not anything else in there, you don't even need u substitution. Okay, if it was like a 3x or an x plus 1 or an x squared or something, you'd have to do u sub. But here we don't. So, write your antiderivative. Inverse sine, we're using our rule. What is my u? What is over a? So x over 2. Now, the reason I'm not going to put a plus c with it is because I have endpoints. So remember, I'm going to get to plug stuff in and subtract. So my top number is going to be a root 3 plugged in. My bottom number is going to be a 0 plugged in. Okay, so this is my rule that we wrote. And now one more time in case you missed me explaining this. If your u is just an x, you don't need u substitution. If your u is anything else, you need it. But if it's just literally only 1x, then what's your du going to be? 1, not going to change anything. Okay? So at this point, I need to plug in my root 3 right here. So I would have the inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2. Now remember, inverse sine, they're giving you the answer and you have to give them the angle. Yes. Okay, so don't say it out loud, but think about on your hand. You want three sine fingers. Yes. So think about which angle, which finger you would want if you want to have one, two, three, and then fold. Pi thirds. Very good. So my top one is pi thirds. Okay, on bottom, I want to get zero fingers on bottom. So if I have no fingers on bottom, which one do I need to pick? Pinky, Pinky which I can't bend by itself, but pretend. Okay, that would be angle <laughs> zero. I know, it's so hard. I can't just only bend that one without making a gang sign. Gang sign? <laughs> it's like, because the tendons are like attached or something. Someone told me that's normal. Okay, you're a freak. I don't know how you're doing that. Wait, you can do it, James? Okay, but like this one moves are you bending it though, or are you just moving it? Oh! <laughs> Do it again. Oh. What? And yours bends down so far. Wow. Oh, wait, I can't do it on this hand. You're not human. What? I can't do it either. I, can't do it either I, I always thought I was normal. I can't do it either. I don't go by itself. Yes, they can. It doesn't work. Wait, two, show us. <laughs> Wait, do you, well, does one hand do it and the uh, other one? This is just, this, this thing is all, it has to go down. Like it's <laughs> That's how mine is. I can't do it. Okay, <laughs> which answer is it? Zero. What? Wait, what? Oh, five percent. <laughs> yes. Okay, how did you feel about it? Okay. So we're not going to do these at the bottom. We just have one more left. And look, we have nine whole minutes to do it. We can do it. 
Look at your last three. Okay, then we have set seven. It's still plenty of time if we stop throwing gang signs at each other. Okay. Look at your choices now. We already did 18, so it's probably not 18. Okay, look at rule 19. Okay, I'm going to write it up here at the top. Number 19 is the integral of 1 over a squared plus u squared. And it's 1 over a. This one has a 1 over a constant in the front. Then an inverse tan. Now, you can write arc tan, but tan to the negative 1, I think it's shorter and easier to write. Okay, then u over a plus c. Rule number 19. So far, we're just writing down the rule. Okay, let's pick the things that we need to pick so far. So what is my a? Yes. If a squared is 1, then a is just 1. Okay? So a is boring, 1. Okay, u is going to be what? 2x. 2x. Now, if it was just an x, I would be like, nope, don't need u sub. But I do need u sub because it's a 2x. So what's du? Oh my gosh. 2dx. <laughs> Which means that dx is what? du over 2. Okay, let's redo our integral. So I have 1 over, are y'all being, no, like are y'all joking? No, the U. You're tired of me? No. <laughs> uh, no, because if the 2 is next to the DX, it has to be on bottom for the DU, because you're dividing it to, simp to solve. I have DU. Oh, yeah, you could do that okay. if you want. Okay. So then when I rewrite, this is still an A here. A squared, or actually, let's leave it as a 1. 1 plus... Okay, then this is now a u squared, and then I have du over 2. What is going to get pulled out to the front here? The half. The half. And now what is left over? This is really your a squared, but we know a is a 1. So you really could put an a or a 1. It doesn't matter. Okay, but then what's my formula? Look up at the rule we wrote. What's going to go in my box? Okay, don't skip the 1 over a, but what's 1 over a if a is 1? One? 1. 1. So I g do kind of get to skip it, but don't forget it still goes there. Okay, then inverse tan. 2x. 2x over 1. 1, which you don't have to write, but you can. No. Okay, and then no plus c because why? I have endpoints end to plug into. Okay, now at this point, normally we would switch our endpoints, yeah? Okay, however, did we leave this in terms of u or did we go back to x's? Yeah. If you go back to x's, you have to use the originals. If you're going to leave this as an inverse tan u, you would have to switch them. So you can pick one, it doesn't matter, but since I went back to x, I'm going to use the same original guys. Okay? So we're going to plug in a half, then we're going to plug in zero. Okay, let's do a half first. If I plug in a half to 2x, what do I get? 1. one. Which finger on your hand will tan be 1? Pi over 4. Okay, why pi over 4? Because sine over cosine. Yes, so tangent is sine divided by cosine. So if they're both two fingers, then when I divide them, what am I going to get? 1, because they're the same. So tan of pi over 4, so you should pretty much know it's always going to be 1, because they're the same. You divide, you get 1. So the top one is pi fourths. Okay, the bottom one, we want tangent to be zero. Remember that tangent is sine over cosine. So which one do I want to be zero? Zero on top or zero on bottom? Zero on top. top. So when is sine zero to zero out tangent? Cosine. Zero. Zero. The, oh, no. The one that I can't bend. Okay, zero. So then from there, what would you do with pi fourths and zero? Okay, subtract. The zero is just going to go away. So is the answer B? Yeah. Uh, no. Why not? Yeah. One half in the front makes it C. C. Okay. Um, all right. Great job. Homework six and seven are due today. Hopefully you did them. <sighs> okay, yes.
We just never have time for things, you know? Wonderful, thanks. 